here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite crab's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at TFC's Death Claw. And yeah, that's right, I said crab. I know it's supposed to be some sort of lobster, but we're in Maryland. We're not in Maine. So today's a crab. It's fine. Don't worry about it. He comes with a slew of accessories. Let's take a look at him. He holds them just fine. You can see these two here. Maybe I'll do the swords at the end and we'll show the gun at some point, but he holds them all. Don't worry about that. We'll take a look at them though. So he comes with these two, which we just saw, and I had him holding it uh, at the bottom, but you can have him holding it either way. It doesn't really matter. It hinges here and then there's silver paint on this otherwise sort of pinkish plastic, and he comes with two of those. He comes with two swords. They become part of the major combiner piece, and he holds them. However, they are coated with a silver paint, which I do appreciate, but there is a little bit more difficulty getting them in and out of his hands. Once they're in, they'll hold them fine, and you can remove them. I've done it a few times now, and I haven't noticed any chipping whatsoever, so that's ultimately a positive. Just giving you a heads up. He comes with a gun that we've kind of seen stylistically it's the same this translucent piece of plastic here the two different uh, gray plastics it opens up flips this way and it has a handle down here he comes with the combiner hand he comes with these combiner pieces now let's talk about him so he's pretty good but it, there, there's still some of the same problems that we're seeing. However, this is better than some of the other ones we've seen in a lot of ways. So we'll, we're going to go through it. Head is on a ball peg, as we've kind of come to expect. Yellow light piping, which we've also come to expect, unfortunately. I don't care for it, but that's what it is. No paint on the face, which I think would really bring this guy to life. That's been a problem that we've seen throughout. However, he does have more paint than usual. At least it seems that way. We'll go through it. Waist swivel. Uh, let's talk about the head articulation a little bit more. So down to there, which is great up to there, which is not so good, and then the swivel, confused dog look, all that kind of stuff. You saw the waist swivel, it has these translucent pieces of plastic on the chest, which have become par for the course and fit the motif of the rest of the set, and then this turquoise V here, which also is painted on and looks nice, as well as a darker gray painted on the sides, which also looks nice. For the shoulders, you kind of get a reverse butterfly, it's for transformation, but you still get it, so let's give them credit for it. However, <clears throat> You also get a universal joint that is ratcheted up to 90 degrees, and then you can cover down with these shoulders that are also on their own ball peg with hinges at uh, the same butterfly piece and comes out to here. So you kind of just articulate the shoulder and then manipulate the shoulder pad to kind of cover the best you can. Doesn't always work well, but it's better than nothing. <clears throat> I think it's fairly good. Uh, you also get the swivel around, which is also ratcheted. No bicep swivel, but you get it just above the elbow. Actually, I think just below. So I think that's ultimate. No, it's above. It's ultimately fine. And it looks as though this is an elbow, but it's not. It has a single hinged elbow, but it also has a joint filler, <clears throat> which is nice. And it gets you just about 90 degrees. So I'm okay with all that. You also have these little claws and tidbits that you can kind of do whatever you want with, depending on stylistically what you think is most appropriate. I think I kind of like that. Same for the other, uh, for the bottom portion. You also have this yellow paint here and here, so that's nice. It's nice to see some paint. And then you have a wrist swivel with the relaxed hand pose holding a five millimeter port. All good. Same for the other side. Waist swivel we've already talked about. There's also this extension. We're gonna get to that too, obviously. Purple paint here <clears throat> looks good on the pelvis. Just two little accents. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I've been asking them to do with this set. And it looks like we're starting to see some of it, like just small little paint nuances that make this thing really come to life. It can make any figure come to life, just a couple little accents. Universal joints for the hips, they're ratcheted, I believe, both ways. Let's check. Out to there, no problem. Ratcheted for the full Monty. And, or that's the full Van Damme. That's the full Van Damme, pardon me. And then the full Monty, you get it forward also, and that's ratcheted forward also. So no problems. Thigh, thigh swivel intact. Ratcheted knee joint, single hinge, gets you 90 degrees. Plenty of purple paint or whatever. It's not really quite purple. It's like a magenta, something along those lines. It's all over here and on the sides, all paint. Very, very nice. I like stuff like that, and it makes it come to life. Imagine if that were plain. It wouldn't have the same vibe, not at all. Uh, on the back, we have the claws. You can kind of articulate these any which way you want, and you can get them out of the way for articulation of the feet, which are also done better than the rest of the set, I think. So they're on a ball peg that's on a hinge. So there's a number of different things you can do here. You get the ankle tilt all on the ball peg that's down to there. You also get it up to there. You also have an additional ball peg on a hinge here, which gets you a toe tilt down. Unfortunately, you don't get much of one up. 
but it's, I think it's okay. Because it's a ball peg, you also get a foot swivel, which I think I'm becoming more and more a fan of. I think I want to see more and more ankle swivels in addition to the tilt and rocker. I think that's important. I think I've become a fan of that. And then you get a rocker, which you can get to a number of different angles. That's like the, the more intended angle, but then you just move the ball peg out a little bit and you can get an even more extreme, extreme angle. And then you just cover down. So all that works really, really well. I, I love it. I, I think that for this set, you know, stylistically, what we've come to expect, this is probably, in terms of the robot, the most efficiently um, accomplished. Uh, the little turquoise accent or the turquoise uh, translucent plastic and then the back cleans up really well. Now the, the claws may be a little intense for some people, but to me, I, I'm okay with them and I think they add something. I don't think they detract. I think they add a little something aesthetically to the overall presentation. All right, let's get started. Peel the legs back uh, if you eat Maryland crabs and you already should be used to that. And then open this up here. And then you want to bring this whole, actually, might as well open this up here. It'll probably help you. It's a lot of collapsing going on there. And then you just kind of combine or wars it, as we've also kind of sort of been used to. And then this piece here is on a double hinge and you kind of, in order to get this to work, the second flap of this hinge kind of needs to sit over top of the other hinge, not straight out. There you go. And then we'll take our foot, which forms the flank of this unit. And we'll use the ball peg here, rotate on it. We'll also spin this foot at that ball peg wrap around this tab inserts into the side there and then <clears throat> this there is a tab there that goes into this foot there and you know we'll, we'll obviously clean it up a bit later and then this just fills that in, and then that peg there inserts into the bottom of here. All right, nothing to it but to do it. Let's open it up again. Open this up. Anything after that uh, IDW Optimus is a, just a, a treat. Oh, we have to get this foot out. Same thing. Now the only difference here is that these pieces will peg together predictably on the bottom rotate that in bring down the double hinge so that it's sitting actually on top of the initial hinge which will then allow you to bring the flank around and tab in these pieces you know they sit here you could just bring them down I may have wanted to do that beforehand but that's fine this piece is already extended here. The little back flippers peg, peg in. And then on the ball peg, bring this down and plug in. Rotate the foot around. And plug into the back. Let's go ahead and get the head done as well. Uh, this piece here, I think in the instructions they actually tell you to take this off. I, I haven't really checked to see if that's necessary yet. Let me, we'll see as we go. So we're going to bring this up because the head can come off like a lot of the tails come off. And, uh, you know, it can be a shield. I will show that at some point, I hope. Otherwise, just uh, take my word for it. And then the head comes down into this cavity here. And then this piece spins around, I believe. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish off the upper half of the body. This is uh, uh, the only part that I find challenging in that spinning this uh, shoulder pad here. And it just keeps coming off the uh, ball peg for me. Not a huge deal, but I, I don't think that that's the way it's supposed to be. Because uh, that kind of forms the little mandibles or whatever they are, little side units. Let's see if we can't. 
There, there, I did it that time. So, good. Uh, and then we have the bottom jaw there. Let's see what else needs to be done. The arms, you open up the side pieces. A little bit different of a transformation as opposed to just folding the hands in, which you know I appreciate. It's almost like they were listening to me on this one. More paint, you hide the hands differently, so it's on a double hinge here. You bring this up, close that, and then just, you know, orient the claws. Same on this side. Open, open, up and around. Close, close, orient the claws. And then uh, this, the head of it, so to speak, you just take it and turn it around. I think, and I think that's it. And then uh, these pieces slide in underneath there, and then you just orient the claws. I'll, I'll do that off camera. I think we all know how to do that. And I think that's pretty sweet. So the arm articulation is exactly the same, uh, and you can orient the uh, shoulder to get a more of a wider range, you know, if you'd like. Uh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I guess this is, this is pretty cool. That they, you know, I, I don't know. I dig it. Uh, the claws, you know, they open to that. Close. There's a separate hinge here for this claw, so there's plenty of range. Same on the other side. All the legs are on ball pegs at the base of the body. I will say this is a bit strained here, uh, and I, it's possible I may have something misaligned that's definitely within the realm of possibility, but you see like they're bowing a bit here. Not a big deal, just pointing it out. And then the legs are all on ball pegs, and then hinge, hinge, hinge. So not much more you could really want. The uh, little mandible things open up, and somebody would be like, it's not a mandible, it's the Slivar. Don't you, didn't you go to high school where they taught you that? And I'll say, sometimes. The uh, upper jaw opens up here. It's on the ball peg. You get a little bit of the hinge action, not much. And then the bottom is on a ball peg. It gets you extreme angle. So you can get his mouth pretty wide, so to speak. And then you can close it up to about there. I don't think, let's see. Oh, you can close it, all the front part all the way, if you so desire. And then uh, the, the back little fins don't move but it's pretty it's pretty awesome like you know like it's goofy of course but it's kind of like supposed to be goofy so i don't know i'm into it for our mode unfortunately you have to undo a lot of what you've done so just untab everything it'll help you out it really helps you out just keep it all free flowing and the instructions are a little weird about this it seems like to me you're supposed to, so it's like this, you're supposed to kind of extend this in order to get the full length arm, but I suppose you can do it either way. I just, I just can't, I just can't be for certain, you know, so I'm, I'm just not sure on that. Fold this foot up here and then you fold this down over top, right? Yeah, and then this plugs in there. This back piece comes around and spins to the back, and then you do the same thing on this side. Now you're not extending it all the way, you're just extending it a little bit so that you can lengthen the arm. This down, this comes around, that locks in, and then this comes in, around. Now you have the hand, you have it ready in the box. It comes like this. And I've noticed that my mushroom cat wants to slide out, so to speak, but you spin that around and then you fold this down. And then this comes in there. And then you can close that up nicely. And when it's all said and done, oh, you can extend the, the waist now too. You can bring this around and this uh, foot should tab into this lower section. But she's eating me alive. Let's see. There, I got one. And I got the other. And then for these, you just fold this gray armature back down. And then you orient all the legs, the little monster legs, down. You can have some on the outside. Whatever, whatever feels right to you. I, I'm sure there's an, 
an official instructions way, but you bought it, so you can do whatever you want. That's the rule. And then these down. And then that's the lower half of the hand. For the upper body, kind of position it like this. So you have the head and then you have the arms coming down and they're kind of forming a U on both sides. And then you just put this peg into that port there. And then same on this side. And I probably should have done this first, but you bring this down, spin it back around. These teeth are really sharp. Uh, they're eating me up, so be careful. And then this comes down and then you can use your combiner port because this comes up and around. And then your combiner port is here for the taking and you can do whatever you want with this. You can have the head down, you can spin this and have it up, whatever you want to do. And then you orient the arm. There is a uh, elbow. I think I would position it so that you could get the hips as the second. If you untab this, you could get a, uh, a double jointed elbow there. And I think it works really well. I think it's clean. I think it's solid. I think it's well done. Now to get to foot mode, you just untab, take the hand out. You would put the combiner port in for the foot. We're not going to do it because I don't have it handy. And I don't think he's a foot anyway in the proper cartoon. No, I don't think so, right? But we do need to kind of undo this again because it does need to collapse. However, we want... Uh, let me see. We want the feet. Yes. So we're going to collapse this and we'll get the arms... Uh, we're just going to get them out to the side just to give us some room to work. And we'll get the head up and out of here also. Because what we need to do is collapse the legs back down to their smallest size. Which I was trying to find a shortcut for, but it doesn't appear to be one. Serves me right. I'll tell you what, I am not uh, going to be sad when this set is over because uh, it's a lot of five mood reviews. Yeah, no, it's no problem. I'll do it. Oh, you're right. They all do have, what is it? One, two, three four, five, mo five modes, and there's six of them? That's like 48 modes. <sighs> okay, 30 modes, nerd. So combiner port would go in there, and then you would close it up. Oh man, what did I do here? There we go. Close it up, connect the feet to the upper tabs this time like we had it in lobster mode and that's the bottom part of it using the butterfly joint untab it bring it down as you do you want to open this up and re-expose the hand we'll cover it down with the claws to kind of hide it the best we can see if that works and what you want to do is bring it down and plug this port into that peg and I'm sure you can clean that up a bit more. So like that. Let's see if we can't do that again. Same thing, down. Collapse the hand. Rotate this whole assembly down. Let's see if we can't. Uh, the more of that lube. You see it? So strange. I probably got it in my eye. Bring this down, rotate that, tab it in, and then let's see if we can't work a little smarter, not harder. Nope. There. And then you bring this down, and that's the leg. And I think it's effective. 
Uh, I also want to note that when you have the hand in, you close these around the hand. I don't think I mentioned that, but yeah, works. And from here, weapon mode is easy. Unplug, bring these out. You got to collapse and cover the hands again. This is not as hard as I'm making it look. Close that. It's squeaky there. That's probably why they added the uh, lube. Bring this around. And then you just want to kind of have this, I think, like that. It's something like that. We'll check at the end. Like this. Shoulder pads are the biggest pain, but they're definitely manageable. Hide the hand. And there's your combiner port where it plugs into the cannon piece. And now that we have our cannon ready, we just insert that into the front. And I think that's it. This isn't the best connection, but you might be able to get this a little tighter. I don't know. Either way, pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. I like this set. I think there's some pretty cool stuff going on here. Uh, this might come down a little bit too, but, you know, I think you guys get the point. These little antenna here are on ball joints also, and it's a, it's a little bit more of a pliable plastic, so you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, it's just... I don't know. I mean, it's simple, but it's fun. You know, I, I like it. I, I wish that this did peg in a bit better. But, yeah, I mean, posed on the little tripod thing or whatever, like the gun stand, there won't be any issues with this. And I think you could even probably bring this down on top to help stabilize it a taste. Yeah, solid. I mean, not super solid, but it's solid enough, I think. I wonder if you could probably even bring these down. I don't know, but that's pretty cool. And there he is with the rest of the gang. We got one more to go. And I think they look great together. I, I think, you know, there's pros and cons to all of them, but I think they look great together. And I think it's a very cohesive set. I think they look like they belong together. I, I'm happy so far. And I'm looking forward to getting the last one so I can complete it. I know everybody's already combining them. If you know me, you know that's not how I roll. Like Combining combiners is a special moment for me. I look forward to it, but I want it to be complete when it's complete. You know, I want to see them all together in all their modes, and then I want to combine it. So we'll get there. Just bear with me. Final thoughts. The negatives. There's still a couple weird tolerance places like that arm bar that holds the lobster arms like it kind of bows a little bit in order to fit into place Actually when the arms have to plug into that same tab, it's a little bit of an issue Also, I, I still think the light piping needs to go and I think it needs some paint on the face to kind of make the head pop So to speak of course a little bit more paint won't kill him, but I have to say there is a fair amount on here You know like there's a couple places that, that kind of look a little plain in comparison you know, like like the shoulder pads being one. Actually, the shoulder pads are a bit of a bear throughout the entire process. Um, but but most of my complaints here are honestly they're they're nitpicks. Now, don't get me wrong. This still feels antiquated to most of what's coming out today. But you know what? I'm welcoming it. I I'm appreciating it. It's it, you know what it's been. It's been fun. It's been fun to look at. It's been fun to get to the modes. It's still made of good materials. It's got great hardware, ratchets everywhere. It even has ball pegs that I'm okay with, even though the ones in the shoulders are a bit ridiculous. It's just fun. I think all the modes kind of work. I think, I think, look, I haven't been the most kind to, to TFC products throughout the years. And Hades felt really good too until the final hour. And then there was no matrix bright enough to light it. But this feels really good. It, I'm really optimistic. I still wouldn't advise anyone buy these yet until I look at that last one and see how it all works. But so far, so surprisingly good. And this might be the best of the set. That doesn't mean it's my favorite. I think I still prefer the shark and the stingray uh, the most just personally. But objectively speaking, this might be the best. They've taken a lot of things that I've been critical of, lack of paint clicky ratchets, fluidity from mode to mode, 
a mix of utilizing the translucence with paint that matches and they've combined all those elements together and pretty much did what I've been asking them to do the entire time. So it would be pretty hypocritical of me to slam this. I think it's really well done. I highly recommend it individually. Can't speak for this set until I get them all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.